Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Here in my hands I have my SIG P365 Micro Compact and SIG P365 XL. Now at this point I have put a bunch of rounds through these firearms at the range and well, these need a good cleaning. And in a prior video, we took a look at this Max Michaels Rapid Range Kit from the company Breakthrough Clean. And so, well, a perfect combination today, some dirty guns and, well, a cleaning kit. And we're gonna meet with Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions, who's going to take me through the journey beginning to end and how to properly clean a firearm. Now, at this point, this channel is very much novice. This is beginner to beginner. So if you're a beginner and you're looking to learn how to clean your firearm, this is the video for you. So go get your firearm, set it down, get all your cleaning supplies ready and use this video as a guide. This is very detailed and takes you beginning to end illustrating the process to properly clean your firearm. Now specifically handguns and you will get two different methods because Carlos and I have slightly different kits slightly different supplies and have to approach it slightly different. So this is gonna be really good for somebody who's a beginner and really wants to learn. So again, do me a favor, go get your firearm, bring it down to the table, get all set up and then hit play because when we get back, we're gonna meet with Carlos and we're gonna take you through the cleaning process. But with that said, we have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what we're about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And so before we get too far, if you like this content and you like what you see on this channel, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless YouTube channel, which is my prior channel. If you like outdoor hiking, camping, backpacking, different gear, backpacks, knives, axes, flashlights, and even EDC and tactical gear, do me a favor and check out my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. Carlos. Eric, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. What's going on, buddy? It's good to see you. <sighs> it's been too long, man, but it's always a pleasure. It has been far too long. Hey, uh, it's pretty cool because, well, you're not on the Outer Limitless channel today. You're on the Eric Outer channel. Oh, and that's, I mean, I'm really glad that you decided to start this channel. And uh, I'm really glad that you decided to tip, dip your toe into the uh, the firearm pond. I, I have a feeling you're going to take to it like a duck to water. So uh, this is going to be interesting. It's been uh, a fantastic start, man. And I got to say, you know, a big kudos to you. And, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time together filming and just working on different projects. And one of the great projects we've had going on is SHOT Show. And, you know, for me, it's really the opportunity for me to get proficient in firearms and hopefully at some point actually know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Definitely. Uh, I, I really lament not being able to attend this year due to COVID, you know, with in 2020, but I'm really hoping and I'm, I'm remaining positive that everything's going to turn out really well for, you know, uh, 2022. Uh, and hopefully we can go in and, and kind of come in with a little bit more knowledge of firearms and just, you know, there's something about having gone to the event once already, you know, and then coming back and uh, feeling a little bit more familiar with the setting and feeling a little bit more familiar with the brands uh, that we're going to be able to sit down and talk to. I think we're going to have a lot of uh, great opportunities uh, if the event does happen to be able to see uh, some some really familiar brands and then some some new brands and hopefully, you know, get some of that material on your channel and get on my channel and, you know, just uh, grow together. You better believe it, man. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I've been actually sort of practicing a little bit, so Getting my uh, Sig P365 and also oh, look at you. my 365XL into some work. So um, you know, I, I I've, I've I've spent a little time in this sort of lower quadrant here. Uh, you know, actually uh, a, a couple times. So I would say I'm at least consistent with my shots. I uh, went to the range actually last night too, which was pretty awesome and tried to make some adjustments and you can see now I'm kind of pushing my way up. So I got to sort of hone in on the center there, but at least I have some, I would say fairly reasonable grouping, even if it's not truly accurate. 
Yeah, at the end of the day, what you're really trying to do when you're a firearms owner is really get comfortable with your firearm. You know, you have a lot of things you have to consider. You have to consider the drift on your sights. Uh, you know, if maybe they need to be adjusted, you have to consider the ammo that you're firing and how accurate the ammo is. Uh, some is obviously you know, uh, better than others uh, when it comes out of a short barrel like the P365 or even the 365 XL. Uh, and also just your trigger discipline, you know, how uh, you're anticipating shots and uh, just getting used to the recoil patterns of your firearm and, and you know, uh, being able to distinguish how the recoil pattern is with the smaller version, which is the P365, as opposed to the P365 XL, you know, for me, uh, I carry everything from a single stack, you know, Glock, like the Glock 43 to something a little bit bigger, like um, the Glock 43X. I've carried a Glock 19, a P320 Compact, even the, you know, the full size Glock 17, which in actuality was the first firearm I ever owned. So, you know, the, the recoil is, is different on each one. And you know, when you're switching from one to the other, uh, it's it's pretty difficult. And you can tell what the difference is between one and another. And I can tell you, you know, with something small like the P365 or even the Glock 43, which is what I have today, uh, it, it's very easy to want to anticipate, you know, that recoil when you're going to go ahead and hit the trigger. And um, that's what causes a lot of people when they're shooting uh, to, to shoot, say, to the left or even low into the left, which is a, a fairly common problem. But it's something that, you know, uh, in time and with training, I, I think that you're going to master fairly quickly. So you'll be good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. But, uh, well, hey, at this point, I've put a number of rounds through both of these and I have to clean this gun up. I mean, you know, I'm a maintenance minded guy and to, to have these sitting here dirty is kind of bugging me. And I thought... Hey, no one better than to reach out to Carlos. I know you've cleaned a gun or two. Definitely, definitely. Now, going to the range, uh, you know, the, the, the carbon buildup inside of the uh, of the barrel, you know, it can follow up the rifling and it can actually, you know, screw around with the accuracy of your shot. And even if you're not, uh, you know, hitting the range constantly, if you do carry your gun, consistently, which I believe that everybody should if they own a firearm, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of gunk just from carrying uh, that collects inside of your holster, inside of your firearm. It can get into the slide. It can get into the barrel. So even just a maintenance cleaning, you know, it, it definitely helps. And uh, a clean gun, if you clean it, you know, and you keep it as clean as possible, it's going to remain as functionally accurate as as possible so uh one, as as long as everything else works as it should uh keeping it clean is just one extra step you can make sure to ensure at least on your end doing your part to make sure that uh it's accurate in your time of need or when you're going to go to the range so it's definitely a big big step in the right direction to do that nice well i know there's a ton of different types of cleaning kits for me personally you know you had uh recommended early on breakthrough clean to me so I got this kit. This is actually the uh, Max Michaels Rapid Range Kit, um, specifically calibered um, in, in nine. So, you know, ch uh, nine millimeter, um, you know, uh, chambered, um, you know, cleaning kit, which is perfect for me. This is small enough, compact enough that I can get it in my range bag, but it's comprehensive enough that, you know, it's going to last me a while. It's going to do a number of different things and can be different uh, cleaning capabilities. So from everything from a quick clean up to a deep clean and a little bit above and beyond some of that with some of the accessories that are in here. No, that's great. And uh, I got to tell you, the, the the folks over at Breakthrough Clean, uh, you know, they're, they're out of Miami. Uh, I was I was fortunate enough to meet them with you in person over at SHOT Show. That's right. uh, very nice uh, set of folks. Uh, they have extremely good equipment. Uh, so whether you're running a rifle, a shotgun, you know, a firearm, you, you know, if you're a competitor and you run three gun competitions, you know, you're just an enthusiast and you're going to be going to the range and carrying or somebody in law enforcement, they have a kit that is is tailored for your caliber you know it's calibrated for the things that you need to do and it's extremely reliable so they, they're one of the companies that i really like working with uh plus you know most importantly uh their you know all their products are made here in the usa um you know that times like these you you want to make sure that you support small business uh, i feel like breakthrough clean is you know um, a great business to be able to go ahead and put your financing through you know <laughs> put your money into and um, i can tell you owning a firearm uh i know that the term 
rabbit hole is used pretty loosely for a lot of hobbies uh, in the firearm community. Uh, the rabbit hole is pretty deep, <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure you know about rabbit holes. Being that you know you're you're an outdoorsman, you're an avid outdoorsman, and you're a knife guy, so uh, prepare to to jump headfirst into it. Um, I myself am using uh, some products from uh, two companies. Uh, one is local to me here in Georgia, and uh, it's called uh, Freedom Loop. And I'm going to see if I can go ahead and get some of that. Inf- there we go. Okay. Nice. That's uh, this is a, uh, uh, it says it's a universal metal lubricant and protectant. So after I've, uh, cleaned the firearm, this is usually what I use to be able to lube it and, uh, to keep it, uh, from, you know, provide some type of corrosion resistance. Uh, it's something I also use on knives as well. So whenever I take my knives down, uh, that sort of thing, I like to use something that's local and support small business when I can. So I love using that. And then aside from that, uh, a lot of the tools that I'm going to be using, uh, like the, uh, the steel rod that goes into the, the, the actual barrel and some of the items I'm going to use to be able to take some of the gunk out of the firearm are from a business called pro shot and pro shot is, it was also at shot show. Uh, but, um, I had used some of their products very early on and, uh, their, uh, all of their products are made in the USA. They employ, uh, you know, some really good quality people. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet the owner of the company. So I'm going to be using, uh, some of their stuff. They have, uh, this stuff right here, which is, uh, it's called One Step CLP, and basically CLP uh, for those that are watching is uh, a three prong system. It's a cleaner, a lubricant, and a protectant. Um, but most important, I'm using that more as a cleaner in this case. I'm going to be using the other one as a dedicated lubricant and protectant. Gotcha. So. Okay, that's interesting because yeah, I ended up with um, actually a a dedicated cleaner, uh, which I, I like the fact that this was in a nice small and compact bottle, and I can just get refills and fill this up as I need. Um, and then I got mm-hmm. a separate lubricant. And then I also felt as though I, it would be wise to get some grease. So I got this battle born grease. I thought it might also be a nice way to, you know, um, you know, get a little bit, it's a, you know, a little uh, more viscous. It's going to have a little, you know, it's a little thicker and, um, you know, hopefully isn't going to run quite as much as the oil would. No, definitely. And uh, I happen to use grease too, uh, depending on the amount of activity I'm putting in my firearm. Uh, there are times where, um, you want to be able to go ahead and reduce the wear on items that have uh, friction, especially when you have two metal parts that are, that are going to be used, uh, that are, you know, constantly having contact with each other when, uh, you're firing your weapon. Um, in this case, you know, if you are putting a lot of rounds down, you know, the, uh, the range, or you're actually putting a lot of time into the use of your firearm, uh, to be able to go ahead and extend the parts and keep them from having to be swapped out and kind of keep them from wiring, uh, prematurely, um, having something like a grease, uh, is really good for that. Um, and it's exceptionally good when you're using it in, uh, in warmer weather, in the colder weather, I prefer to just, you know, start using oil, uh, is something maybe with a little bit more viscosity, but still oil, uh, because it's something that, uh, you know, if you're going to go ahead and use your firearm, you can just go ahead and clean off and then you can start from a clean slate rather quickly and then kind of get into it again. It doesn't gum up any of the internals, anything like that, but I do use both. I mean, there's great applications for both. So I'm glad you're using that. And, uh, I have used some of their stuff. In fact, um, I did want to bring this out. This is actually a, um, just a kit that I have put together myself, just uh, a few items that I've gotten here and there. This is a small Molly bag that I picked up, you know, dirt cheap off of uh, Amazon. And then what I do is uh, I keep things like uh, my Q-tips, which, you know, I use as applicators or to be able to go ahead and clean little areas that are hard to reach with, you know, your average brush. Um, And then inside here, it's funny you mentioned uh, Breakthrough Clean because I use Breakthrough Clean as well, but uh, I use their Quick Wipes. And uh-huh. their quick wipes are really good when you're out on the field. It's uh, a, a dedicated cl- a CLP as well. They clean, they lubricate, and uh, protect. I have some uh, napkins and stuff like that and some wipes. And um, I use a boar snake to be able to go ahead and get some of the gunk out of the uh, – Okay, cool, because I have one of those too. They call it a the battle itself. rope. So we'll, uh, I'm assuming we'll be using all this stuff? Uh, I'm going to be using something very similar to that. Um, I'm going to be using a, uh, a sta- uh, like a, uh, a rod to be able to go ahead and, uh, clean the inside of the barrel. Okay, but, like, a, um, like a T-handle rod, something like this. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, Carlos, I've obviously run ammo through both of these firearms, but just for today and this demonstration, I'm going to pick one of them. 
I actually have put a lot more rounds through the 365 micro compact. So I figured this would be the one we'd clean. Just get an understanding of kind of how dirty it is. Um, this is uh, 80 rounds. So I was going to try to make it to 100 after yesterday. Um, but, you know, I made it to 80. So this will at least give us an indication of after 80 rounds, uh, you know, what it might look like. Now, I was shooting 115 grain full metal jacket, um, you know, brass, um, you know, uh, uh, ammo. Um, so not steel casing, you know, everything was was brass. Um, and so I guess, you know, every ammo is going to be a little different, right? I mean, depending on what you're shooting, it might be a little bit different. Definitely. Um, depending on the brand that you're going to be using and depending on the powder that's used uh, to ignite the bullet that, you know, is uh, exited from the, the barrel of your firearm, um, sometimes they, they can be a lot cleaner than others. Uh, I, I always like to use, you know, um, you know, brass uh, uh, casings, you know, yeah. in the, the, the bullets, because, um, brass is a relatively soft metal. Number yeah. one, um, that can be collected and be given to somebody who can use for reloading. If you happen to reload, that's really good to use rather than stainless steel or, or steel, which can crack or even aluminum, uh, because they do use aluminum casings. And, uh, aside from that, you know, since it's soft, it's going to be softer than the barrel that it's firing through. Uh, so if you get any shavings, anything like that, it's not going to, uh, you know, follow up the rifling it's not going to mess up the rifling and mess with the accuracy of the gun. So I'm glad that you're using that. Um, you know, I try to stay away from reloads and I try to stay, stay away from anything, you know, any steel casing or even uh, aluminum. Yeah. But, you know, in, the, in this day and age, you kind of get what you can. So I, yeah. I mean, as long as you know and you are conscious of what is going through your barrel, uh, what is coming out of your firearm, and you keep it clean so that you know what's going on in there, you're not going to have a problem with accuracy. So yeah. uh, you're, you're doing the right thing. Cool. Uh, so you have a firearm with you to clean today. What are you going to clean up? I do. I have my uh, my Glock 43. Uh, okay. As you yeah. can see, I've been carrying it a bit. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, unload it right now. Uh, I'm using um, 124 grain uh, federal HST rounds. Uh, this is just the standard pressure. It's not a plus P or a, or a plus plus P. Yeah. Um, and then got that and pulled Th this. Those to the are side. the rounds that you're hoping you'll never shoot, right? Uh, well, it's, it's better to have and not need than yes. the other way around. That's right. You know? That's so, right. uh, but yes, I do have my, uh, my Glock 43. It's ready to go. And, uh, yeah, we, we can start whenever you're ready. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to get into this. So, I mean, the first thing is just some of the terminology. I mean, when we, when we actually strip down the firearm, I mean, there's a couple of different ways about going about it, but this is going to be a basic field strip. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the, the great thing about SIGs and the great thing about uh, Glocks is that um, not only are they, they modular, like the Glock 43 can accept the, the 43X uh, frame or the 48 uh, frame. Um, I know that the P365 is modular and that it can accept the XL frame as well. Uh, it's, there's not too many parts that you need to be able to go ahead and take that down. Uh, you know, you just go ahead and you use the same uh, uh, method to be able to go ahead and take one down than the other. Um, and that's one thing I really enjoy about it. Uh, for something like, you know, the firearm itself, they usually take down very, very similar. So that's one thing I really like about them. So uh, what are you going to be using? All right. So, I mean, well, first off, I mean, we're removing the slide. Uh, we're pulling out the barrel. We're pulling mm -hmm. out the recoil spring. And then uh, yes, for, for me, actually, I was going to, I have a pin, so I'm going to punch my pin and actually remove the fire control unit so that I can get my handle completely out and free. And that'll allow me to do a little bit more of a deep cleaning. Okay. Yeah, no, that, definitely. I mean, that's a little bit more than what most people would do for a field strip. Uh, you're going to detail strip it, which is great. Uh, it's nice to be able to do that, especially after, you know, shooting, you know, your first couple of hundred rounds. So you can see how the wear is in a lot of the parts, especially the fire control unit that you have uh, inside of the, uh, the, the, the P series uh, SIG that you have most of the P series, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, the, the 230, the 320, the 365, and them uh, are able to do that. And uh, you're able to swap that, you know, FCU um, in different versions like uh, i believe you also have the p365 xl frame you'd be able to use the fire control unit for the p365 in that one and vice versa so that's that's actually really cool yeah that's right and i've swapped them out so i actually have a couple extra uh handle grip modules now laying around so i can mix and match and play with things as i feel fit which is kind of nice so all right well i'm okay. all uh stripped apart here so 
uh, you know, I guess, you know, for me where I'm going to be doing this handle, do you suggest I just kind of use a little bit of uh, soap and water and get this cleaned up outside of here? Because I mean, why spray all these like chemicals and stuff in here? Or, you know, what's, what's the best thing to do with a grip like this? That's polymer. Should I be really using a heavy solvent on this? Uh, for solvent, I really don't recommend using a solvent. Um, that's why I, I typically run a CLP. Um, CLPs are usually a little bit milder uh, when it comes to the solvent because you have other things like lubricants and you have protections, uh, protectants to be able to keep it, uh, you know, keep provide some corrosion resistance on the firearm, especially the metals. Um, but when it comes to the polymers, uh, uh, you made a great choice with Breakthrough Clean because I know for a fact that they are safe to use on every part of the firearm. Um, there, there are other things that you can use that are very similar. Like um, I used uh, Ballastol for quite some time. In fact, I think I have a, a small spritz of uh, Ballastol that I keep in that little uh, small pouch as well in case I need to go ahead and just spray it down really quick and work on it. And I don't want to actually use just a small wipe. Um, having those wipes are great to be able to go ahead and run through the, the barrel itself. Uh, but, you know, just a small spray of some CLP or even some droppers and stuff like that um, would work great. And I'm pretty sure it's it's polymer friendly. So you should be good to go with that. But, you know, just be mindful if you're going to use a dedicated solvent, uh, make sure that it's polymer safe. And I'm pretty sure that the solvent you have is good. All right. Well, I'll do this. I'm going to ignore this for the moment. Um, so I'll bring this upstairs. I'm just going to use a little soap and water. And, and I actually have a couple of bristle brushes. So I got this like, you know, nice nylon bristle brush. So a little bit of, uh, you know, dish soap and water. And this is actually Cerakoted too. So I want to be a little bit careful with it just as to not mar it up. So I'll just get this mm -hmm. cleaned in a little bit, of, in a, uh, a little bit later. Uh, but in the meantime, so uh, first things first, I mean, we, we kind of want to what pre-treat the barrel, right. To start getting the, the gunk all uh, and carbon buildup broken up inside of this. Definitely. Um, you know, when there is carbon buildup or, you know, copper fouling, anything like that, uh, from taking it to the range. First thing you want to do when you strip it down is you want to be able to penetrate as much as you can into that so that when you're going to go ahead and clean it, uh, run your bristles and stuff through it, uh, it's going to take as much of it out as, as you can. You might need a, a few passes, maybe not too much because yours is relatively new, but you know, if you're, if you're somebody that goes to the range and then runs, you know, like say hundred rounds, 200, you know, 300, wh however many rounds you choose. And then you choose not to clean it immediately when you get home, which I don't recommend. I recommend that you clean it when you get home. Yeah. Uh, you know, it allows all of that gunk and that carbon and everything to solidify inside. Yeah. So it takes a little bit to loosen it up. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a great thing to be able to go ahead and uh, just kind of uh, put a little bit of the CLP or, you know, the dedicated solvent into the barrel Okay. and kind of just let it marinate in there. <laughs> now, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're going to be cleaning uh, sort of from the inside out the muzzle end, right? Correct. Yeah, you always want to do uh, to use the same direction because what you want to do is you want to go uh, with the rifling. So you're going to yeah. go from, if, if you have the barrel itself, okay, you want to go from the back forward and out. So from the base out. Yep. And now what? Spray some on the outside too, just to get stuff working. Definitely. All right. So we'll get that. Okay. All right. What's next? All right. So once that's done, uh, you go ahead and just kind of spread it around a little bit onto the barrel itself. Okay. Now, Make let sure me it's ask nice you this because, you know, I think it's just something worth noting. I took a quick read through my uh, user's manual just to see if there was anything specific. And it seemed for the most part that I didn't need to be too terribly concerned with the one exception being, well, where this is a, um, you know, a striker fired uh, firearm, you do need to be careful in that striker area. Yes. Yes. Uh, so when you're actually here, let me see if I can go ahead and show that in the camera. Um, when you, you can actually see the striker pin that's sticking out of uh, my Glock 43 right there. I'm going to see if I can kind of get some, uh, there you go. Okay. So that area, you want to keep that striker pin as dry as possible. So what I typically do is there's a little lever here, at least for the Glock that I pull back. And as soon as I do that, do that, you hear a little click. And if you uh, notice that seals that off striker that little pin, area, well, it becomes shrouded inside of the little hole where it, where it comes out from. Okay. I don't, I don't so, know that I can do that, but I'll just have to be careful. Yeah. Just as long as uh, you know, and you're mindful of the fact that that striker pin is there yep. whenever you're cleaning. Um, I usually clean face up. 
Uh -huh. Okay, so anything that's dripping down is not going to yeah. drip into that little hole or that area where the striker pin is. It's going to drip anywhere else. So, uh, we have, so yeah, so we have not only this section, right? So up in the back here, uh, but mm -hmm. also towards the front where the actual striker protrude, protrudes out the front and makes contact, um, you know, with the primer. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You just want to be mindful of that and you want to make sure that uh, that stays as dry as possible. I mean, you can also keep like a small, uh, you know, a, a little piece of cloth or something on top of it. I technically don't do that because if it gets damp, then it dampens that area and then you're going to end up having to right. clean it anyways. Yeah. Um, you are going to be able to just kind of, you know, run a little bit, uh, just a small little bit of the, um, the cloth, you know, in that area to be able to go ahead and clean so we're doing that now. We're doing that a rough striker. cleaning before we spray uh, anything. You can do that. Um, okay. But typically you want to keep that as dry as possible. So that, I did that just to make sure that it was nice and dry. Gotcha. Um, now, what I will typically do is, and uh, you can actually see the rails on both sides. Uh, yep. What I typically do is I take a dab of the CLP and I just drop one on each end of the rails. Now you're, you're in a, you're not in a lubricating state right now. You're in a cleaning state right now, right? Correct. Yeah, this is the CLP. So I drop it right into the rails and I just let it run down so that it gets all into the rails. Okay, because so believe it or not, gunk actually collects in there too. So Sure. Then, so for me, um, where I got this little pump bottle, again, I'm going to hold this vertical. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to I would recommend. Away. Yeah. You might want to just kind of, if your hand is dry or if you want to put something, you know, dry rag. in that area. Yeah. yeah maybe a small rag, just put it there. Uh, or I can spray, you can it, spray it on the rag there. instead, right? Versus pumping it onto the. You can do both. Yeah. All right. Let's do it that way because I think that's going to be a much safer bet. And then what? Run it down the rails, you're saying, right? Correct. Yeah. Run yeah. down the rails, uh, run it down the oh, area. Yeah. Look at, I mean, I can see already it's picking up all that gunk. Definitely. And it's not going to get it all for right now, but it's going to put a nice layer on top of the, that area so that yep. you can go ahead and uh, get started with the rest of the firearm and just kind of like start working at it a little bit, uh, you know, little by little. Okay. Nice. And then this obviously inside here, it's, you know, on the inside, it's like a track. So there's a groove. Correct. Yeah, that's why I really like uh, I stand it um, basically on on its front end. Uh, let that little barrel shot out here in the front kind of act as as the stand. And then I just place a small droplet at the end of the rail and I just let it kind of just, you know, just flow down. And it, it does. It does. It goes uh, right all the way down to the base. OK. Nice. Now, my firearm is not going to be as dirty as yours. There's going to be a little bit here and there. But uh, since I've been carrying it, um, I like to carry myself as clean as possible. Yeah, I mean, so, this ad, that adds up fast. I mean, these things are getting grody pretty quick. Yeah. And I can tell I'm going to go through a ton of these little patches. So it's yeah. time, to, no, time I, to load up on the cleaning materials. Definitely. I have uh, these from Pro Shot. Um, you can use, you can actually cut up uh, some nice uh, cotton t-shirts. If you have some old t-shirts that you haven't used for a long time, uh, you know, some white cotton t-shirts are really good to use because once you cut them into small squares, you can actually see the gunk when it's on there. If you have somebody that doesn't mind you putting stuff like that into the wash, you can wash them and you can reuse them. <laughs> but typically, you know, you can get as many squares as you want. You can throw them away and just keep using old shirts. Um, I actually use this stuff right here. It's from Pro Shot, And um, the, this is a 750 count. Um, they're, they're gun cleaning patches and it's hundred percent cotton flannel. Um, you know, they're, they're extra absorbent, you know, it's, it's really good. And um, they're uh, just, they're about two and a quarter inch by two and a quarter inch. I mean, that's really all you need. Plus, they're really easy to be able to go ahead and loop in uh, to things like this so that you can go ahead and run this through the barrel. But we'll get to that. Okay. We'll now, to that. now, what about something like a Q-tip? Can I be using this and getting some of these crevices? Is that Definitely. I um, mean, you think that's worth doing? Of course. Um, okay. Those are actually some of the things that I use as well. Um, you can purchase Q-tips pretty much at any you know general store, but um, that's great for the railings. That's great for just some areas that are a little bit harder to reach uh, inside of the the uh, the slide itself. Um, and also keep this. I noticed that you had a brush as well. I just I, I use uh, the nylon bristle brushes. Yeah. They usually have two sides. 
as you can see, there's one here and then there's this side. Uh, if you know, you're on a budget, you can go to like the 99 cent store or the dollar store and, and pick up an old toothbrush as long as it's, uh, as long as it's got some, um, was it like a medium thickness yep. uh, of bristles and it'll be good to go. Uh, okay. so you can use that as well. And then I tend to use that when I am cleaning the inside of the firearm. It works really well in breaking out the, the gunk as well. So I put a couple of drops of the uh, CLP and I just kind of start getting to work on the inside of the firearm, okay. being mindful of the, uh, the, whole the striker pin, striker, the yeah. striker area. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of working just the general area inside of the firearm and where, you know, just slightly above the barrel. Uh, you know, if you have anywhere outside that's kind of got some gunk, you can kind of work that on too. And then you can uh, kind of work the serrations and around the, the sites that you have, you know, because you use uh, breakthrough clean, that is something that is not going to be corrosive to the sites. Uh, if you happen to use night sites or, you know, uh, anything like that. Uh, I happen to run night sights off of mine. I'm pretty sure your P365 comes with night sights as well, right? It does, yeah. Tritium night sights. They're pretty yeah. sweet. In fact, I really That's a like really them. great upgrade to have on your firearm. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's that's a great start. Nice because it's not even an upgrade. It's standard uh, pretty much. Definitely. I mean, there, there's a couple of different models, but, uh, you know, on the micro compact and also on the XL, that's, that's what mm -hmm. you get, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So unfortunately with Glock, you get horrible night sights. I mean, you have horrible sights, but if you take it to the Glock factory, or if you send the slide to the Glock factory, um, they will install uh, for a fee, uh, the Glock approved night sights, and they'll do it all themselves and they'll send it to you. I actually went to Glock uh, HQ in uh, Smyrna and I had them install them in my, uh, my Glock 17. But uh, for these, I actually have a site tool that I was able to go ahead and calibrate and use myself. And then I installed these. Okay. So um, everything from the inside all the way through around the outside. I just got a little bit more to go. I'm just going to touch up the outside here real quick, and I think I'll be ready to move on. All righty. Okay. So at this point, I would say my uh, slide is pretty much good to go, buddy. Alrighty, just give me a moment. Let me go ahead and finish this little area here and we should be good to go. It's it's always good to keep a nice little film, you know, of the stuff on there. Right. Uh, yeah. You can go back later and you can dry where you feel uh, you need to. You don't want to have it nice and uh, wet uh, because obviously when you're shooting, um, a lot of that carbon you know, tends to build up in areas where it's expelled and mm. uh, just, you know, just this general area where the, um, the, um, the jacket, you know, will, the, you know, the, the actual, not the bullet, but the casing will just right. pop out yeah, that little close. area. You're going to see because of the explosion that you have in your hand when you're firing your firearm, uh, that carbon is being expelled. And so it's going to collect in this area. You know, it's going to collect a little bit higher inside here, uh, there, especially here in the front as well. Uh, you're going to be able to see a lot of that buildup. So uh, it's good to keep it nice and damp when you're working on the firearm. And then at the end, uh, you can kind of just go over it one more time and then uh, just get the rest of it. You know, a lot of that stuff and just keep it as clean as possible. Okay. Nice. All right. There we go. All right. So the slide is essentially good to go. Uh, I don't know if you have to do anything to the outside portion, but uh, I think for the time my... being, I'm good. Once I put it back together, I will probably uh, actually get a real thin film, like a super thin film of my oil on it and then just microfiber it dry and call it good. Okay, good. Uh, now, what do you want to do? You want to work on the lower or you want to go ahead and work on the barrel? Let's do um, the barrel. Whatever you choose. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I'll put so you're going to use your T-handle? Uh, yes. Now, um, mine is a little bit different than a T-handle. Um, it is a... Uh, Let's see here. Let me just show it really quick. This is a six and a half inch stainless steel uh, rod that I have set up here. And uh, what it is, is it has this little jig that's right here. Yep. And it'll actually come off if you don't want to use it. But the reason why I use that is because when you are working on the barrel itself, so you want to stick it in and then as you're, you're moving, what it does is it kind of catches here, as mm -hmm. you can see, 
Yep. And this is brass. So this is not going to mess with this little area and you're uh -huh. not going to create, you know, any issues yep. uh, just in case, you know, you really have to get, I know this get is the looks funny, get but the business. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, as you're, you know, you're moving the brush inside, uh, sometimes you really have to work it in there to be able to get some of that gunk out now, and you know, your, your hand can slip. Yeah. Let me ask you, you this. Is, is that a nylon or a brass brush? Cause I have both. Okay. Um, depending on the amount of fouling that you have in your firearm, you can use either one, uh, for, you know, uh, just light preventative, you know, maintenance, uh, between, you know, trips to the range and that sort of thing. If you haven't used it that much and you're carrying it, use the nylon. That's what uh, I'm it's, thinking it's perfectly at this fine. point. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. go least aggressive. And let me ask you this, this is called a Jag. What is a Jag? You have any idea okay. what these do? Um, yes. Uh, basically what I like to use them for is I'll take one of these uh, little uh, the squares and yeah. then I end up uh, taking the patch and I lubricate them with a little bit of CLP or just some lubricant to okay. kind of just uh, break down the, the carbon further that's inside of the barrel itself. Well, the idea is that you're, you're, you're cleaning, not lubricating, right? So for in my case, I'm still using my, uh, my, my solvent. Correct. I mean, keep in mind, you do already have some solvent inside of your barrel. So yeah. um, with this, what you're going to do is you're going to reintroduce a little bit more uh, solvent or, you know, your CLP. And okay. what you do is you thread it through the jag like this. Okay. So I got, I got this. So, all right, you're using these. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Correct. Okay. Right, uh, you can use whatever you choose to be able to go ahead and thread it through to be able to go ahead and introduce a little bit more uh, of the CLP okay. or whatever you're going to be using to clean the inside of uh, the rifling of your barrel and, and the gunk. And you just kind of just slide it right in and let it come out and then just bring it right back. In this case, you can go front to back without any issues because of the fact that, you know, it's, uh, it's just this that's going through. It's not going to be marring the inside of your, uh, your barrel. Uh, and because this is brass, um, it is not going to mess with, uh, the rifling inside of your firearm. So just kind of doing that a couple of times to make sure it either takes out some of the gunk that was in there and it reintroduces just a little bit more of whatever you're using to clean the inside of your barrel with. And you can actually take it out once it's done okay. and you can look at it and see if there's any carbon buildup that's already been caught. It's just a little bit. Yeah. yeah for probably me, you can't see decent amount. But, uh, yeah. You can probably see there that there was some that was in there. Not a lot, but you know, enough for you to be able to go ahead and see just a small uh, difference and know that whatever it is that you're, you're, you're using is working. So okay. that's what I use the Jag for. And then, um, all right. So we're done with that. Once that's done, I go ahead and swap out the Jag for the brush itself. Install the brush. All right. All right. Now in this case, just kind of run the brush again from the, the back from the base towards yeah. Yeah, from the base to yep. reach out right, right out through the barrel. Okay. All right. Now, typically I will take this off and I'll run it back. Um, and the reason being is because like I said, you want to keep the rifling as true as possible. So if you happen to use something like brass, um, the inside of your barrel is still metal, but, um, yep. Once you've been running it for a while, you want to make sure that whatever you're using is always consistently going out one way because you want to keep the rifling as true as possible. So okay. it's always a good technique to do that and then take this out. Uh, that way, you know, you don't accidentally bring it back and, you know, reintroduce a new pattern of rifling in your firearm because you want to keep them as accurate as possible. Again, with the stuff that we're using right now, it's not going to happen. I mean, I could, I could just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you know, with these nylon brushes because it's preventative. It's really not going to do much to the inside of the firearm, but it's really just muscle memory yep. and getting used to it. Kind of like when you're holding your firearm and you keep your hand off of the trigger and you're just kind of keeping it, you know, uh, on this shelf on the side, it's really just exercising muscle memory, whether it's loaded or not. And you treat every firearm like it's loaded. You should treat every time that you're cleaning the barrel, like it's, you know, like you're using something that could cause uh, an issue right. uh, later on. So, so mine actually so is on a little swivel. You'll notice this T handle, this actually swivel. So if it does catch the rifling, it'll kind of move. I'm, ass yeah, I'm assuming that's, that's, that's 
really good. Yeah, it's actually swiveling on ball bearings, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, uh, Breakthrough Queen makes some really, really good quality stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, that handle isn't brass or or steel. I think it's some like carbon fiber. Or yeah, it is like a, it is like a carbon fiber. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, they they use really really high quality stuff. I, I really like their stuff. Nice. So how many times do we do this? Uh, you can do that about three, four times. I mean, just keep in mind you're 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 basically running the uh, the, the brush into the rifling to be able to go ahead and break down whatever uh, has been penetrated by the CLP. So um, once that's done, you reintroduce the jag. Yep, got it. You put another here. little uh, spritz of the cleaner in there just for the sake Not of yet. getting it. No. No, not yet, because what you want to do is you want to see the results of the stuff that you've uh, you've put in previously. So okay. you take another one of your uh, your squares, kind of prep it into and thread it into the, the jag. You'll have to excuse me. I have fat hands, so this isn't the easiest thing for me to do, but I got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> and then um, you go ahead and you reintroduce right back into the barrel. Back out, back in. I mean, definitely out. still some gunk on here, but it's not terrible. Yeah. Now for me, um, I'm just getting some of the CLP out and, and the stuff in there because it was already clean, but there was some lint and, and stuff that was on there. So yeah. um, I know that it's it's working. Uh, and aside from that, once you start to see that the, um, the gunk is starting to disappear from your patches and you can run as many patches as you want through your firearm until yep. you feel it's clean enough for you. Uh, some people just want it to be functional and uh, that's perfectly fine. I, think, but, uh, uh, I mean, not to sound like I'm being lazy or anything, but with the minimal amount of actual stuff coming off at this point compared to what it was, I'm starting to feel like it's at least coming out pretty good. So, yeah, um, yeah. you know, and you can I feel do, free to stop there. Yeah, I was going to say, I do plan on putting rounds through this pretty soon. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's going to sit clean for a ton of time. Definitely. It's, it's and uh, you can also, you know, by eye, you can also check it to make sure that it has, uh, you know, it looks clean on the inside. Um, typically, what I'll do is I'll have a, uh, you know, small flashlight or something with me, and I'll be able to go ahead and check the inside of the rifle, uh, the rifling, excuse me, of the yep. barrel. Yeah. And you can just kind of take your, your flashlight and kind of look in there a little bit, you know, um, typically another good thing to use for something like this. Um, there is a small, a, uh, a UV bore, uh, part it's, it's J shaped from pro shot that, um, you can actually place at the end of the, um, at the, 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 the breach, excuse me, uh, so that it faces out the muzzle. Uh, it just goes in maybe about an inch or two, and it has a small disc on it. And I apologize that I don't have one on me. Um, it's in my, my uh, flight case, and uh, I just I happen to misplace it at the moment. But what you do is you, you shine your light on that little circular uh, portion, and I'll, I'll see if I can put an image uh, of the actual uh, apparatus so you can see what I'm talking about and it will illuminate all of the inside of the barrel so you can see if there's anything that's still uh, gunked up or if you can see if it's still clean and I can tell you just from you know looking in with my uh, with my flashlight right here uh, that it's nice and clean so or at least clean enough for me to be able to say okay that is carry worthy we're good to go but um, if it wasn't uh, one thing that I really recommend getting is uh, just some like small polymer gun tools uh, like some small picks and uh, I have some from pro shot here. They kind of look like those tools that you get from the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they actually look, they're a cross between like dentist tools and lock picking sets. Uh -huh. And uh, you can actually go in there with these and kind of work at the little grooves uh, that are inside to get a little bit more of the, uh, you know, the carbon that's built up in there. But in this case, uh, it's clean enough. Uh, I, I don't have any issues with that. I haven't really um, had any buildup like that where I've actually needed to use those tools, which is good, which means uh, I've been maintaining my firearm good enough. So, and right. if you do that from the very beginning, it's going to last you a good amount of time. So. Nice. Well, I just took a couple of final passes with the uh, bristle brush while we were sitting here talking. And at this point, running this patch through it's just about perfect so i'd say my barrel my friend is done perfect so you can set that to the side okay all right so that's awesome well i'll tell you what let's do a real quick pause 
um, just for a second. I'm going to run upstairs and I'm going to clean out my grip because to me, there's no reason to put anything in here other than a little bit of, you know, di honestly, dish soap and water, I think is going to do it for my needs with a little bristle brush and that'll clean that out. So give me two minutes and I'll be right back. Sounds good. All right. So at this point, Carlos, this looks pretty good. In fact, I was looking inside here thinking that I left some uh, debris behind, but the reality is um, it's actually little bits of the Cerakote that have kind of worn off in those high traction areas where there's a lot of friction, um, you know, between the actual uh, grip module and the fire control unit. So uh, just, uh, you know, interesting little observation while I have this thing apart. It's always good to be able to see that because uh, you're going to know the problem areas that you're really going to go ahead and uh, put some work into when you're cleaning your firearm. And uh, you're going to know that those are the parts that you're going to want to look at and, and pay attention to to be able to see, OK, is the wear a little bit premature, uh, is a little bit too much for what would normally be just a standard you know, round count uh, being that it's new, you can actually tell, okay, I've got 80, 100 rounds into it. This is what is, uh, you know, uh, being done to the firearm. Is the wear uniform or not? Yep. So it's it, it's good to know for that. And also it, it's good to know that, okay, because there are certain areas that you're going to be using that have wear, uh, those areas – you're going to want to be able to put just a little bit of oil, just a little bit of grease, that sort of thing, so that you can kind of keep that wear as minimal as possible. Gotcha. So, okay, so you're actually going to clean you, the equivalent of your fire control unit while it's in the grip, whereas I'm yes. doing mine separately, right? So what about this? I mean, can I just liberally spray this with solvent and not worry about it? For the fire control group, um, I, I typically don't. Um, right. I'll just take a small, you know, uh, piece of cotton, that sort of thing. And I will, you know, I'll spray it with some solvent. Okay. And then what I'll also do is I'll spray a little bit of solvent on the, uh, the brush itself. Okay. Uh, and you can either, you know, you can use your brush and kind of go through the metal areas pretty liberally, you know, and then uh, for areas that you feel need a little bit more attention, you can use uh, the cloth itself. So gotcha. that's what I actually did with mine. Um, All right. On well, the gonna... inside, I mean, yeah, I'll get going with it. I actually have some pretty clean patches. Once I was cleaning out my uh, my bore there, these are still pretty good. So might as well use these to get the the heavy gunk. So economy and efficiency with my supplies. No, of course. All right. At the end of the day, you know, uh, the ends justify the means. You can do a lot with a little uh, mm -hmm. in this particular case. That's why I have that... Uh, that small compact uh, case, because you don't need all of that stuff when you're out, you know, you, you want to be able to go ahead and get it as clean and as functional as possible. So you can pick it up and you can keep going. So, uh, you know, that's, that's something that I recommend that anybody does. Uh, you know, you just take a small amount with just some of the minimal stuff that you're going to need to be able to go ahead and work on your firearm. Yep. Uh, field strip it, which I mean, for something like the SIGs, you can strip everything, you know, pretty much down to the very core and then just swap it out, swap out the fire control unit or the FCU from one thing to the next. Mm -hmm. um, little things like that, a few pins, the lower, you know, the upper, uh, the recoil spring assembly, you know, uh, the RSA and the barrel, that's pretty much everything once you split it down. Um, with Glocks, um, the fire control unit, there are, are parts that remain uh, married to the lower, but um, items like, say, for example, the um, I guess you could say the fire control unit for the Glock yep. is held in with uh, uh, basically two pins, uh, one in the front and one in the back. And um, it's essentially just the, the trigger assembly. Uh, the trigger assembly group and that can be taken out and swapped with something that's aftermarket like with what i have i actually have a, a different trigger that's on here um it's hinged uh, it's not hinged it actually has the trigger safety just like the standard glock trigger because i like to um standardize all of my triggers across you know all of the platforms i have oh, for, interesting. For good idea yeah so you get the consistency every time you yes. pull yeah so That's with the exception of my SIG firearms that have a different style trigger, yeah. um, you know, uh, the M&P series firearms from Smith & Wesson, they have like a, a bit of a hinged trigger. And then the Glocks have um, uh, a built-in trigger safety built yeah. into the trigger itself that kind of sticks out a little bit. So to be able to go ahead and pull uh, the trigger back, you have to be pressing that trigger safety and to disengage that last ditch safety that you have because it doesn't, the Glocks naturally do not come with safeties. Uh, the safety is your finger, like they say. So, uh, 
yeah. um, that's just a, I guess a little added extra bonus that they put in there, but Springfields have it. Uh, there are other firearm companies that have it as well. But um, what I like to do is I just, I like to standardize the trigger so that I at least have that additional safety uh, across all of my platforms. And it feels familiar. Uh, it's, you know, basically practicing so that whether you're switching from a full size to a compact to a carry like a, or a micro compact, like what you have, yep. uh, everything is going to run the same and feel the same in your hands. And it helps uh, with your muscle memory. Nice. Well, I'm about done with this, which means uh, I'm about ready to shift gears. How about you? How are you? How are you doing over there? Oh, uh, no, we're good to go. I'm ready when you are. Um, I did put a just a small amount of uh, CLP and cleaned the uh, the recoil uh, spring. Okay, so uh, I was going to ask like you that. about that. Yeah, so same thing, right? We're just going to spray this and uh, just do a quick little cleanup. Yeah, th that's probably e the easiest part of your firearm that you can go ahead and clean. Uh, it's, it's all one piece. It's captive. Yep. So, uh, you just spray it just a little bit and then just take a, uh, uh, a small, you know, just a, a little square or just a dry towel, you know, something lint free and be able to go ahead and uh, clean that up. Now, this is one part that I was reading in the manual said after about 2,500 rounds, you pretty much looking to swap this out. Does that sound like something that, you know, makes sense or do you have any experience with that? Yeah. Yeah, it, it varies uh, depending on the kind of rounds that you put through. Um, like I said, there's there's standard rounds and then there's uh, pressurized rounds. And pressurized rounds are split up into two categories. You have plus P, which is a certain amount of pressurization over normal, yeah. uh, which is dictated by NATO standards. And then you have plus plus P or plus P plus, excuse me. And that's overpressurized ammo that is higher than what you would say pressurized ammo like uh, plus P is. Um, they tell you not to use plus P or plus P plus uh, because that's going to accelerate wear uh, inside of the firearm. So for me, I don't use any of those. Um, you can run them every now and again, uh, but you're running the risk of increased recoil and increased wear of, you know, these parts, especially the ones that have, uh, you know, friction. Um, when you have a guide rod, uh, some of the companies they have, um, what they've done is they've created a, uh, a, me a metal guide rod, you know, yep. a recoil spring, but there are areas that are polymer. So uh. it, you have to be very wary of the kind of things that you're introducing inside of your firearm, because at the end of the day, when you shoot a bullet, it's combustion. And when you have overpressurized combustion, you are introducing additional wear that the firearm is not used to. So, um, you got to be mindful of that. And definitely, that's definitely one of the things that you want to make sure. Uh, I always keep a spare for all of my firearms. I keep a spare recoil spring assembly because you oh, never smart. know when it's going to go bad. So um, yeah. that's one thing I do really recommend uh, that you get, um, whether you run the P365, P365 XL, you know, Glocks of any kind, yep. uh, MNPs of any kind. It's a relatively, you know, uh, easy part to get. Uh, they're relatively cost effective and uh, it's just great to keep. And I, I keep one in my range bag. Gotcha. So whenever I go, I can just swap it out. All right. Now, what about cleaning up these mags? Okay. Now, the mags. Um, I actually clean these pretty often, uh, yeah. but it's good to clean because when you, uh, when you have these mags put away uh, and you're constantly introducing you know, um, rounds in and out, they will fill with lint, okay. um, especially when you're carrying. So you want to be able to go ahead and take out all of the rounds. I'm dry, man. <laughs> when it's done, uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to see the base plate right on the bottom. And there's going to be a little dot that's there. Okay. Now, you can use a variety of things to be able to go ahead and take that, that, that dot down. Uh, in this case, let me see. Uh, I, got yeah, I have a mechanical my, pencil. My, my punch. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You have your punch. I'm using a mechanical pencil because believe it or not, not everybody has a punch that they have yep. readily available at home. Um, and basically you just hit that dot and now, you're going to hear a click in the inside. We're holding on to the plate so it doesn't go flying off. Right. Uh, well, it's on a shelf. Okay. So when you do that, you kind of nudge that shelf just a little bit. All right. And you'll feel that click. Yeah. And now once that's done, you have, uh, you nudge that forward just enough so that that little pit, that little, uh, dot that's there, yeah. uh, can't pop back up. Okay. So nudge it underneath the plate. Yes. So okay. once that plate has been moved enough to be able to go ahead and keep that from popping back out very slowly and with your thumb across the top, you start to move the plate forward. 
think I'm gonna... It may take a little oh, bit. Oh, I got it. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you, you keep your thumb on, on that, that plate. Yeah. And then you start to adjust the shelf little by little. Okay. While you're taking it off. Yeah. Now you're doing that because there's a small plate for some firearms that are inside, but you also have the spring that's inside that's keeping those rounds uh, go- coming up Correct. when you're going to be able to go ahead and, and fire them. And okay. you don't want to keep that from just springing out. Yep. So you definitely don't want to do that. You're going to save yourself a lot of heartache when that happens. So uh, once that's done, you just remove the shelf that's on the top. You remove that base plate. Show me. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do it on mine. That, that's why I'm saying I, I, I've uh-huh. actually already done that on mine. Yeah. Um, I actually use a different tool because there is a, uh, there's like a, uh, a, there's a shelf, but there's also these two pins that are on the side that keep it there. Uh-huh. Uh, so I need to use that, that particular tool to be able to take it apart. But so what am I uh, doing? If I have, okay. Once that's done and you have that, uh, that base plate that's mo- moved so forward. This, this base plate's forward. Yep. Yes. Okay. Keep your thumb on the top of the base plate. Okay. Okay. And then with your other hand, your yep. index and your thumb on that hand, uh, grab the sides yep. and move it out. Like remove it completely. Until it's off. Yeah. Until it's removed completely. Yeah. Okay. Now you keep your thumb there. Okay. Yep. Now you slowly depress it after you remove your base plate and then you can take that spring and everything right off. It's just going to blow out I can't on me wait to what? see that. I can't. Well, uh, keep in mind, you, you, you have your thumb oh, over it so it. that you can keep it from. Yep, there you go. I got, I got it. You're good to go. Yeah. Okay. All, All right, right. Now what? I was hoping we would have like a blooper <laughs> reel on this, but I'm glad that, that you were, you were safe about it. So once that's done, you take out the spring, but you have to be mindful of how the spring was put in. So um, there is a direction that the spring is in. You can okay. actually just take that completely out. I see because my mag is like a D shape and the base plate is like a D shape. So it really can only Correct. go back in one way. Now this yes. is called what is that? Is that the follower? What do they call that? You do. Yeah. It, it's called the follower. All right. So it's okay. So now the whole thing comes out. Exactly. Follower now you can out. remove the follower and okay. you can remove that, that little shelf that's uh, on the bottom. I'm pretty sure you may have one, um, but you oh. can remove that and then you can clean the follower. And I recommend cleaning the follower because it does happen to build up with uh, some items as well, like some media uh, okay. while it's uh, going in and out of the firearm. Well, that's interesting. Cause I have a, uh, almost like a single double stack and you can see the change in the spring going from a double to the single there. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, this is the good. way that, the way that the, the rounds actually collect inside of your magazine instead of mine, uh, it doesn't run like a true single stack. It's, it's kind of like a one and a half. So it, right. instead of just going straight up, it kind of, it, it kind of comes in like this, but right. it's wide enough so that the bullets stack in a way to where it's consistent and it comes out of the, the firearm, you know, nice and consistent, but it, you're able to actually put more, uh, rounds into that, uh, that magazine. So that's actually a really cool, uh, concept that they did. I think that they were one of the first to, to really start using that, that, uh, one and a half stack, if you yep. will. All right. So I'm just for the expediency of time here, going to attempt to get this back together and I'm going to clean okay. all this out pretty easy. So just what use my, my solvent cleaner, just like I would any the rest of this stuff or what? Uh, Actually, no. Um, what, what I do is I just take a, uh, just take a wipe and I just yep. go through it uh, to get, uh, because typically what you have, you don't really have carbon buildup and stuff like that in the inside. Uh, gotcha. um, you have, uh, you know, just lint and stuff that builds up in there. Uh, if you want to go ahead and use a little bit of lubricant, you know, uh, you can do that on the spring itself. Uh, but you really don't have to do much uh, to the mags. They, they, they are expendable too. Uh, the mags do wear over time, especially when you keep your rounds in them. So uh, gotcha. for stuff like that, this is really just preventative maintenance so that there isn't gunk in there and it cycles uh, regularly. All right. So, well, now that I got that back together, just a quick little function check there and seemed to work out just fine. So I'll use this in the end to cycle through my gun when I get it put back together. We'll check it. Hey, there oh. you go. Sweet. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, um, you know, I think we've covered, uh, from what I can tell, pretty much the entire thing. You got any uh, last little tips and tricks on the cleaning side? Now we're working on uh, lubrication and reassembly, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Now, uh, with regards to lubrication and reassembly, let me go ahead and put my magazine here to the side. Um, 
that's when I go ahead and I start using something that's a dedicated uh, lubricant and protectant. And I'm pretty sure you have uh, something as well. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, uh, just like with the uh, the slide, uh, when uh, I introduced the lubricant, uh, excuse me, the solvent onto the the rails, you can do the same thing with uh, the lubricate, uh, the lubricating uh, product that you're using. So, yep. if it's a lubricant and protectant, all you really have to do, uh, depending on how the media comes out, uh, this has a dropper. Yep. So I can go ahead and take it and just run it on to, just put one on one side of holding, the slide holding the slide vertical yes from okay, top down from like in, the base in up a little groove into the little groove so you yep. can actually see let me see if i can go ahead and, and show it in the light a little bit better okay yep. i put yep. one on this side of the rail okay. and then one on the other side of the rail and you just keep it face down yep all right and you just kind of let it guide down naturally okay now you keep it like that until it's uh, fairly close to the bottom. It may, depending on how much you put in, it may pull out on the bottom. And then what you do is you just kind of clean that little area. I mean, I got uh, a you know, real long, small. yeah, my rails go all the way to the bottom. So do you think I might yeah. need more than one drop? Or do you think that's Well, no, right? because of the fact that it's lubricant, it's going to, it's going to go it's straight keep down. Running. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then um, what I typically do is I take the excess that is at the base and I'll take okay. a Q-tip. Yeah. I'll take the excess because, you know, you've already cleaned the inside of, of the slide or the upper. And then what I'll do is I'll take some of that. I'll run the Q-tip along the rail just a little bit. Okay. Now take some from there Yeah. And take I, some from the other side. You know what I'm picking up on here is, uh, you know, I, I'm starting to see some spots. You can see it's shiny so that you can see where I have a little bit of metal to metal contact. Should I be paying yes. close attention to those areas? Yeah, you want to make sure that you get a nice even coat of, of lubricant uh, in those areas. Um, in fact, for items like that, if you feel that you're you're starting to see that wear, uh, two things. Number one, because of the firearm being new, um, I'm going to go ahead and disclose that there are going to be places that are just going to be naturally broken in. Right. And and what that's done, this is just it's very normal. Uh, there's not going to be any excess wear. Okay. You know, just because you put, you know, you've put, uh, what, less than 100 rounds well, through the firearm. So, so it's, it is relatively new. I think that's important because this is considered a nitride finish. And I'm sure the yeah. entire slide has the nitride finish. And at this point, it's worn off a little bit. In fact, not that I'm saying it's like heavy rust, but you can see like an oxidization. So it's worn through the uh, nitride finish. And now it's a little bit of bare steel in there. And you're starting to see just a little bit of that corrosion because of that. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you want to just pay special attention to stuff like that and make sure that you use a lubricant and a protectant, more, something that is a dedicated uh, protectant for that, because uh, obviously you want to keep it from corroding. You want to keep any rust from forming inside of your firearm and you want to keep any, any premature oxidization of the metal because, yep. you know, you're running, you're running bullets through this. Sure. You know, this is something that, that is supposed to be very high quality and you work really hard to pay for items like this. You want to make sure that it is at a hundred percent because you did pay a pretty penny for it. So. Yeah. Now talk to me the difference between the actual um, uh, lubricant and then uh, the grease. I mean, what should I be really using here what when when am i using this grease okay for grease when you have uh, very high wear between two metal parts i've always been told that when it's metal to metal contact and you uh you know that you're going to have that metal to metal contact use grease when it's something that is just going to have minimal metal to metal contact or areas that you want to make sure that keep from uh, rusting uh use lubricant now um in the winter time i strictly use uh the lubricant uh, because of the fact that I want to keep as few parts from seizing from the gumming up of the uh, the grease as possible. But uh, in warmer areas, you know, like when you're in the south or if you're in, you know, you're in the spring and summer seasons or even in, uh, you know, a warmer climate. Grease is excellent, um, you, you know, and it also works really well if you run a lot of uh, rounds downrange through your firearm. So um, it's it's really situational. But um, if you use lubricant only, it's it's perfectly fine all season. If you use grease, it's fine. You just have to be mindful of the fact that if you put it in areas that have moving parts and you um, subject it to the elements, it may gum up. Uh, if you don't use it for a while, it may gum up. But grease works excellent. 
and right, it stays so. where it's supposed to be, whereas lubricant will run depending on how viscous it is. So you don't want to over lubricate. Um, yep. And that's why after after I actually put some drops of the lubricant inside of the uh, the slide uh, in, inside of the rails, um, I actually run a Q-tip along the rails and I wow. take out all of that excess lubricant because you want to just create as l- just a just a tiny, tiny film. Right. Um, that's, that's in those areas. In here. OK, nice. Yeah. All right. And you can put that excess that you picked up because it's clean. You can put the excess on the roof of the inside of the uh, the actual the slide as well. You well know, should I be avoiding of... the uh, the ejection port area, or does that not really matter? Yes, you want to keep you want to keep on um, uh, avoiding the striker portion, uh, Strikes, but the ejection yeah. port area, that sort of thing. You you know, obviously that area needs to be clean. Yeah. So you want to just go ahead and run stuff there. You can go ahead and dry it off. Um, I typically don't keep that area lubed. You really don't need to, um, but you do have to clean it. So, um, you know, introducing the cleaning portion of it, you do want to go ahead and clean that area. Yeah. I mean, I've already cleaned it. I'm on, I'm on lubrication mode myself at this point. Yeah. Right. So then you are good to go. So a real thin, real thin film. What about like all these like underside areas and stuff? I know it's a little gap when you actually put this on your handle, but at the same time, you know, just to protect it, just a nice thin little film. I would, I would say yes. I would err on the side of the caution and say yes. Um, as long as it's not in an area, you know, where the striker is, yeah. um, or that there's, there's an area that's going to potentially, you know, impede the movement of the round or the use of the round in the firearm, right. uh, you know, having a nice light coat is perfectly fine. And I will say that it is different for every firearm. So if you are, you know, if you have a question, you know, just, feel free to go ahead and consult the, the manual. If you can't, if you don't have a manual that came with your firearm, you can go online to the manufacturer's website and they usually have something available for you, you to be able to use, which provides some recommendation points for, uh, for lubricant because for something like a lock or something like a SIG, you really don't have to oil every single part or lubricant every single part that's there. That's there. There are really just some uh, some places where they really want to make sure that you just put just a small droplet here and there, and you're good to go because they are very simple and very reliable firearms. So uh, that's something to consider. Now, what would you consider the area in where your uh, recoil spring there is sitting? I mean, that would be a high wear area, right? So a tiny little drop of grease in there, or you want to make anyway? sure. Yes, uh, either or would be fine. Um, you want to make sure that that place first off is clean. Uh, so you want to get any buildup that, that has gone in that area. Um, but I do introduce just a, just a, a light amount. In fact, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll put a little bit of uh, CLP or just lubricant on a, um, uh, just a cotton, uh, the, like the Q-tip. And then I'll just introduce it via the Q-tip and just dab it into that little area itself. Okay. So that you have, you know, just a little something that's there, nothing too crazy. And you can see I was probably not as careful cleaning as I should have been because, well, hey, it is what it is, but I will. We're all learning here. That's right. Nice. Yeah, and I can see where the barrel sits inside. There are some areas that certainly rub, so that's going to be mm-hmm. important to pay attention to. So, all right, well, if I feel like I've coated the inside of my slide fairly well and then, again, avoiding all those striker areas, at this point moving forward, should I be – uh Uh, doing anything with my barrel? I mean, I'm assuming we're not going inside the rifling at all. We're only staying on the outside of all of this. Yeah. Uh, One thing that I do do, um, and I'm going to go ahead and and show you exactly what I, what I uh, typically do is on the, the outside of the barrel itself, you're going to notice that when you've been firing it for a while, especially on this area right here uh, on the top, you're going to see what people like to call a smiley. And uh, the smiley is basically the area of wear that actually forms in a circular, like kind of a half circle motion that looks like a smile. Okay, so this portion right here, in fact, just for maybe uh, say the first inch, inch and a half of the barrel, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna introduce a little bit of, uh, of you know lubricant. So I'll take like a drop or two and just put it right there, as you can see. Then I'll just take my hand and I'll just kind of like you know, just apply it. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm looking at the opposite side of where I had the rub on the inside of my slide mm-hmm. because that's where that barrel is seating. So I'm okay. actually going to yeah, get my for, little bit of grease on there too. 
so this on the top, instead of putting it on the top, yeah. because that does have access to the, it's, it's not always inside of the firearm. Uh, what I recommend that you do is if you're going to apply grease, apply it to the inside of the okay, firearm I, here, I that, yeah. because that wear is actually that part that part of the barrel having contact with the inside of the firearm. So what you want to do is you want to be able to grease that portion of, of the firearm so that when there is contact, uh, the grease is sitting there. Okay. I got you. Yep. All right, but what about I put a little rest? bit of lubricant there, though. So, okay. What about all the rest of the barrel? Um, now, one other point of interest that you want to go ahead and and uh, be mindful of is this little gap that you have here. You'll see that on uh, on your firearm right there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, another reason that I use a Q-tip is I add a little bit of the lubricant onto the Q-tip. Okay. And then you can use that, and you'll notice that the Q-tip fits right in between the two and you just kind of work your way into it and get a little and introduce just a little bit of uh, lubricant in there and you're good to go okay well but with that exception i mean that's that's basically it um you may actually have these little shelves that are on the sides yep right here uh, I'll put a little line. Oh, I can of, see. I missed all that cleaning. That's a good. Uh, that's a good tip. All yeah, right. that's something to to consider. Um, mine doesn't gung up a, that much. Um, oh, it's gross. And again, this was already clean, <laughs> but yeah. uh, that is something to clean to keep in mind because they will be built up there. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually take a step back and just clean that real quick, so this goes back in better shape. I'll just take a second. All right. Well, nice. That's better. And back to the little drop of lubricant. All right. So I'm good there. That I would say is definitely taken care of now. Much better. All right. So, all right. Now, what about the, uh, the recoil spring? Are we doing anything to lube this up at all? Um, at the beginning when you were, you know, originally working on it, uh, to be completely honest, that was more than enough that you need. Uh, you really don't need to have it, um, that lubricated. Well, uh, right, it's so a spring at the end yeah, of the day. For me, it was a solvent. So now I just had to have to introduce, and I guess maybe that's why you like the CLP, right? Correct. Yeah. It's a nice one step method to be able to keep everything good to go. All right. So I'm just going to introduce a little bit of my, uh, my lubricant here and I'll spread it around. Let's use my fingers. All right. Yeah, it's something that's fairly easy. It's just uh, that's that's like I said, it's a it's a part that wears, so you're not going to really have to do much to it. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, once that's done, you can go ahead and reintroduce uh, the barrel back into the upper of the slide. Mm -hmm. So you just go ahead and take it like this. Just kind of slide it in. Tilt it back so that it slides right back into place. Okay. Okay. Once that's done, you take your recoil spring assembly, guide it right back into the area where it was. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have your fire control unit, and you would insert that back into your lower in your yeah, case. But so it, yeah, at this point, it. I mean, I've only used. Um, the solvent to clean this up, but this probably needs some lubricant too. Cause I got, you know, my manual safety, I got the trigger, I got my takedown, I got my, um, you know, the slide lock. Yes. Um, for that, go with what the manual tells you, uh, with regards to lubrication points. Okay. So I'm just going to take a real quick, uh, peek at this for a second and, uh, okay. we'll reconvene. Sounds good. All right. So because my fire control unit, um, is where the slide actually indexes and, and it rides right on here. I'm just taking a, and I can see some wear points. I'm actually mm -hmm. just taking a real thin coat of grease on my finger, just enough, tiny little bit, because I've already lubricated the rail itself. And I'm just running it right down the top rails. And I didn't see anything specific in the actual manual about this, um, but I am going to do that, which I just, my mind tells me that's the right thing to do. And other okay. than that, I think I'm good here. 
Nice. So for, for my uh, lower that has the fire control unit, um, there are certain areas that um, not only have contact with, you know, the slide, but they are going to have wear points. So for example, uh, on here, there's some little metal points here and then towards the back. And then what I'm going to do is I have my, uh, my lubricant and just a little bit is coming out. I'm just okay. putting it on there just to yeah. make sure it's good to go. That makes sense. That's pretty much what I was just doing on mine. Keep in mind on those little parts, those are the parts that have contact with the rails. So mm -hmm. you already lubricated the rails. Uh, right. So there, there is, is going to be a little bit of lubrication on there. So what I do is I take it, I introduce some on there, and then I kind of just dab some of it off. So some stays on it, but just not completely. I just wanted to touch it just a little bit to make sure, you know, it's on there, but it's not wet. Uh, it's just, just slightly damp so that uh, when it's introduced to the rest, uh, to the upper, uh, it does have uh, some lubrication on it. It is going to have some uh, excess lubrication that comes out either the front or the back. And then what you do is you just clean it after you've cycled it a few times. Right. So I'm good there. I think I just okay. uh, pretty much actually, I'm just going to run this. Did you run a Q-tip down that track? Uh, yes. Yeah, I did. I, I did that uh, before I went ahead and I put the, uh, the, the firearm back together. Okay. All right. And I didn't notice you got your, uh, you got your slide back on. On the grip? No, I don't have. Well, no, I don't have it. Uh, I still have it set to, to two pieces. So I have the, the dedicated lower and the dedicated upper uh, separate for now. All right. So I'm with you. Okay. okay. So once that's done, uh, you have everything already set up on your upper. Yep. You have everything already set up on your lower. Right. And then um, you're going to go ahead and basically add the, the from the rear onto yep. the lower. You're going to go ahead and marry those two. Make sure everything connects and cycle it once. Now keep your, your hand off the booger trigger, your booger finger off the trigger <laughs> and just cycle it a few times. Ooh, feels good. Actually. There you go. All right. Yeah, you, now, you, can, you can feel it. You can, you can, you can, um, it, it's, you know, it feels like a new firearm because yeah, uh, basically that's what it how is. much I play with this. Cause to feel the difference. I mean, I've been cycling this thing constantly, so that's pretty Definitely. cool. Now, nice. um, what I typically do, and uh, I have a, a cloth here, um, this is just a, a, a lint-free absorbing cloth, and then I just take it and go over, say, like the serrations on the firearm and the upper, the slide, and get some of the excess lubrication that may have come off, mm -hmm. and just onto the firearm itself. I am wearing gloves, so uh, I do have some of that, that that ended up on it taking, you know, being mindful of areas like the sights, that sort of thing. Nice. Yeah, I can see areas now in the serrations where it didn't get a little bit of lubricant, so it looks all like modeled. So I know this sounds crazy, but I'm actually just going to add a touch of lubricant and just even everything out. Yeah, you want to make sure everything is nice and clean. You don't want to lubricate the serrations too much because remember, that's the shelf. That's the, the grip, grip that you're using when you're going to, it's kind of like the, um, the jimping on a knife when you're going to be know, able I to know. go ahead and use the, the flipper tab. Uh, you want that um, accessible and you want to be able to go ahead and uh, control the firearm by using those serrations. I'll get that. Uh, but yes, there. of course, you want to make sure that that's clean though. So uh, yeah. definitely work on that. I mean, I, what I need is I need some CLP. I need to, I need that like combo cleaner and lubricant. So it... now I know uh, breakthrough actually breakthrough clean actually makes one. Um, but there are a lot of really good companies that you can get that from. Uh, there's uh, you know, you can get stuff like that from anywhere from Walmart to your local gun store. Yeah. Uh, even on Amazon, you can get it with prime. Um, I believe, let me see. There's uh pro shot does make a, a dedicated CLP breakthrough clean makes dedicated CLP. Um, Ballastol is a great CLP to use. In fact, um, that is a very, very old tried and true um, CLP. Uh, other YouTubers like Haycock45 swear by it. And it, it, it may smell like, you know, really bad gym socks when you apply it, but the <laughs> smell is temporary. It does go away and it works extremely well. Uh, I can use that in knives just like I use it in, in firearms. And for a while, that was all that I was using and it was working perfectly in my firearm. So, um, you can use stuff like that. And, um, 
One thing that I think that a lot of people do neglect when it comes to cleaning their firearm is cleaning their holster. Ah, and um, yeah. that's something that while you're while you're doing that, I just I just want to go ahead and touch up on real quick. Um, whether you have a Kydex holster, whether you have a leather holster, um, when you're carrying your firearm, just like lint goes into you know places like your magazine, into the slide, and into the firearm, it's going to get into the holster as well. So what you want to do is you want to have something you know dedicated. And I can actually take like a uh, the brush that you were using. Uh, along with a just a little square and run it through you know just areas of the inside of your holster and just collect some of that lint that's in there and you'd be surprised what comes out so that's something I really highly recommend because if you're gonna clean your firearm, you're not going to introduce it back into a dirty holster. And I mean, as an analogy, it's like taking a shower and, and being really clean and then coming out and wearing the clothes from the day before again. Yeah. Using, just... a, using a dirty towel. Exactly. Or yes, exactly. Or, you know, or using a dirty towel. So, yeah. Yeah. um, so I highly recommend you doing that. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, man, this thing actually is looking pretty sweet at this point. I got it nice and freshened up uh not overly lubricated even though i did use a little bit of lube to sort of even out the finish i mean just wiping off the excess no problem at all in fact this thing looks absolutely money so pretty yeah. happy with a that. little goes a long way with uh with lubricant yeah and yeah. um yeah. You do also want to run it a little bit more dry than usual uh, when you first have it, because you want to introduce some of that wear in certain points. Mm. Uh, there has to be a break in period for, for some guns, for most guns, you really don't need it. I think for SIGs and for, you know, Glocks, M and P's from um, Smith and Wesson and that sort of thing, you really don't need that, but you know, you can run them a little bit drier. You can run them a little bit more wet. Uh, you just want to make sure that you introduce, you know, some cleaning routine, and some lubricating and some protecting, you know, to the firearm from the very beginning. Number one, because you want to have that discipline. You want to be able to go ahead and clean it and make sure that you know what you need to clean when you need to clean it. And and two, with the investment that you put in all of these parts, you know, firearms, especially in this day and age, they're not cheap. So why are you going to want to go ahead and, you know, run them and just put them away dirty? It's like using your knife, uh, you know, and just putting it away and just never you know, working out the gunk and everything that's inside of, you know, the, the pivot or inside of the liners, that sort of thing. And then just allowing it to rust and oxidize and stuff. It's not going to work at hundred percent. You want your firearm to work hundred percent. So uh, doing something like this keeps it working as uh, functional as it can. Uh, and not only that, but you know, very first thing is clean to inspect, inspect to correct, correct to perfect. And Hey, when it comes to a piece of equipment that may be the difference between life or death, absolutely this thing has to perform and i like that saying that's actually a really good saying so i hadn't heard that but that's that's definitely a first but that definitely applies in this situation yeah i told you man i'm maintenance minded i'm telling you man you you've you've stuck to this like uh, like a duck to water i'm i'm <laughs> i'm really happy that that you're getting into this i got a feeling you're really going to have your eyes opened again in a different way when we go to shot show uh i think that that's going to be a really good opportunity so uh guns up Every, everything good you function check them yeah Keep your hand off of the trigger function checked it everything yeah. works well Perfect. awesome so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to reintroduce my magazine rack around place it inside of the holster i remove the magazine take my other round place it right back in place it back into the magazine and it is good to go Ah, uh, Carlos, man, I can't wait for that shot show. Neither can I. I, I, I really look forward to it. Um, as long as we're not staying at Circus Circus, I'm happy. <laughs> stankus, but, stankus. Uh, yeah, yeah, that and uh, just you know, uh, like I said, it was kind of like the first time when we went to to Blade Show. Um, you know, it, it it was like a kid in a candy store. I just kind of felt like with just the sheer amount of of. Uh, 
stations that were there to be able to look at products and to showcase, you know, to look at the, the, the new products that were being showcased with the amount of floors that were there. There was a lot of ground to cover. Um, I think we did a great job the first time, but I think going in now, we're going to have a better concept of what we're going to tackle. I think we're going to have a a new uh, set of, of uh, items that we're going to want to go ahead and, and look at a bit more. Um, I know you have a lot of parts that you've purchased for your firearm. Uh, there's going to be firearm companies like SIG uh, and Glock, uh, even aftermarket companies that make uh, products for uh, both like uh, Grey Ghost, uh, yeah. that we did meet while we were there. There's going to be a lot of companies like that. A lot of companies that have uh, parts that you can interchange with both firearms, like Polymer 80. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, really cool companies that I think we're going to want to uh, go ahead and check out, even aftermarket companies like Apex, uh, Apex Triggers. Um, so uh, it, it's going to be cool to see the, the kind of content that we put out now, now that you have that, ga that, you have that interest uh, that's uh, much like mine with regards to firearms. And I think that your interest has peaked a little bit more than mine right now because because you're, you're kind of in that honeymoon stage, which is great. I, I really like to see that. You know, it's uh, unbelievable. It's, 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 it's putting a smile on my face. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Buddy, I, 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 right now I'm drinking out of the fire hose, man. It's just, uh, <laughs> I, it's just coming at me. So I can't wait. Awesome. So all right. Awesome. Well, hey, again, salute. Appreciate it, buddy. We'll talk soon. Take care, man. We'll talk later.